Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Christmas time is upon us, and as we go about our business of preparing for the holiday, we are surrounded by what that means. We hear music playing everywhere that reminds us of what it was like to be a kid growing up, and we're out buying special food and drink and doing our best to get all our gift shopping done, some better than others. And everywhere we go, we tend to hear one sound in common. You know, as I was going out through, throughout my week this week, I kept hearing a bell ringing over and over. Whenever I walked into Walmart, you know, you hear that bell and somebody is asking you to donate. Whenever you walk into the mall, you hear that bell again and they're asking you to look for your change. Well, I still do. I reach for change in my pocket, even though I don't carry cash anymore. But it kind of got me thinking. You know, whenever we're considering what these organizations mean and how they relate to the church, it got me asking a question. You know, what is the relationship between that? Well, it's, it's kind of a difficult question at first, but I'd ask you to consider that for many people, there is little difference between a social organization like the Red Cross, for instance, and what we do here. And what I mean by that is that, you know, don't get me wrong, because I'm not saying that there's anything, you know, bad that the Red Cross does, because there isn't. They do great and wonderful things for people. But I'm saying that sometimes when we look at the church, we only think that its function is to help people and be there for each other. And while we do want to do that, make no mistake, the purpose of our epistle reading today is to remind us that the church is also so much more than that because it is based on the gospel of Jesus Christ and what that means. And this is an important message for Advent because as we look to the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we must also ask ourselves what gifts he has brought us as part of being who we are. I'd like you to remember also that Paul is speaking to the Philippians. And what he is saying to them is that their church is a wonderful church because they have a partnership in that gospel and they partake of grace together. You might have heard those two phrases as we read our scripture reading a moment ago. And the purpose of our discussion today is to talk about what those two things mean, both for us individually and for us as a church together. So let's begin that by discussing that concept of what a partnership in the gospel means. Now I ask you, what do you think of whenever I say the word partnership. A number of things might come to mind, perhaps a, an agreement, like a handshake deal kind of thing, or coworkers that you work with, or you might even think of your marriage. But usually when we think about the term partnership, we think about it in terms of human things, like perhaps becoming partners with someone in a business. But what if I suggested to you that partnership can actually mean something more. What if I said that when Paul talks about partnership, he is talking about the very foundation on which the church is built? And that's not a partnership of words, like we sometimes think it is, but rather it is a partnership that is based on something we can see, touch, and taste. All right, let's go to the text. In verse 5, Paul says, I thank God in all my remembrance of you because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. So the question we must ask is, what does the partnership in the gospel mean? Well, put simply, let's take a, a look at that word gospel. I'm sure you're aware of this, but gospel actually means good news, whenever it's translated. 
And the Word of God is that good news. Because what it does is tell us about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the promises that come to us from that. And that truly is good news. And what it means is that our relationship in this church is one that is based on faith that we all share together. Let me ask it this way. Are you aware that something has happened to every one of us in this room? Are you aware that something occurred that changed who you were fundamentally whenever it happened? I'm sure you know the answer, but our baptism, if that baptismal font or others like it, changed us, and it made us who we are, and it brings us together now. When you look at the people around you, and sometimes it is our tendency in church to look and say, oh, there are other people here, but they're all individuals living their own life. What I would ask you to consider is that your baptism actually unites you. It gives you the context to look at other people and say, I am not alone because we share this faith together, this faith that was given to us through that baptism. So it's more than just a name. It's more than just a badge. It's more than just a condition. It is the living, breathing faith that lives inside of each and every one of you. So that is part of what partnership of the gospel means. But let me ask you, what do you think that partnership looks like? Well, in all honesty, it looks a lot like what you do already. So partnership in the gospel looks like going to each other's houses for Christmas parties or going on a confirmation retreat together. It also looks like being at the bedside of a friend whenever they are in the hospital. And it looks like listening to someone who is suffering from depression and not judging them and perhaps even crying with them in the midst of what they're experiencing. It looks like those things, but it is also so much more. Because it looks like a people who are giving thanks and praise to Jesus Christ and is making him the center of our lives and what we do on this earth. You see, that may be evident to those of us who are sitting here in this church, but that's not always the case for people outside of here. Sometimes whenever they look at the church and its partnership, they don't see that. And sometimes we don't see it either. Sometimes we end up asking this question. We come to church and we say, well, I don't want to just hear about Jesus. I want to learn about how to live my life. Or I want to know about how to make my marriage better. Or I'd like some tips on how to be happier. And I understand that. Those are relevant questions to have. And we want answers to those. And we want to know what the Bible says about them. But there is a place for that. When we go to hope sessions or Bible studies or meet with our small groups and discuss these things, those are the places where we can tackle those difficult subjects. But here's the thing. Whenever we come to this service and this worship, what we are doing is we are forgiven of our sins because of what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. And this is our opportunity to thank him for that, to be participatory in that process. Because I'd ask you to think about this. This is the man who has given us life and freedom. This is the man and God who sacrificed himself so that we don't have to wonder what will happen to us when we die. This is the man who touches our lives every day and struggles with us in our weakness and in our pain. This is the man who gives us hope. And that is truly what this season is about. The partnership that we share is not one merely based on whether or not we serve good coffee or have good activities for the youth. 
It's not based on how entertaining our church is or how contemporary our music sounds. Our partnership is the fact that we all have one thing in common, his death, his pain, and his glorious resurrection and the promises that brings with it. Through his death, we have been promised that we will be forgiven of our sins, that we will be given the Holy Spirit who walks with us in our suffering and so that we are not alone. And he promises us eternal life. Here in this church, here and now, God opens heaven to us and his son is present with us, not only in our worship, but also in the Lord's Supper. Here's another verse to consider that Paul talks about in verse 7 of Philippians. It is right for me to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me in grace. And what do you think it means whenever Paul says that we are partakers of grace together? Well, grace means to be forgiven. And to partake quite simply means to eat or drink of something together or to do something jointly as one. And what this is saying is that our partnership is not an empty one backed up by something like a handshake. Our partnership is built and based on the holy gifts we share together. When we say our partnership is based on Jesus Christ, what we are really saying is that our partnership is not an idea or an agreement, but it is based on something tangible and real, something that you can see, touch, and taste. Earlier, when I asked you what you thought of when I mentioned the word partnership, we thought of temporary human things. We thought of a handshake deal or joining a company. But our partnership with the church is based on something that is true with a capital T. And the Lord's Supper is proof of this. When you come before this altar today, you'll be receiving the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in, with, and under the bread. It is not a symbol, it is not a ritual. It is actually true and present in these things. Listen to the words the pastor will speak over these elements. Listen to what he will say because they will be the same words that Jesus Christ spoke to his disciples. He will say, this is my body and this is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Your Lord and Savior is saying that he is in these elements and that he is part of them. And furthermore, whenever you walk up to this place in front of the steps, you are not merely walking on carpet, but rather you are stepping on the very paving stones of heaven. Because there is a reason that we say, therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven. Because here is the truth, that where Christ is, heaven follows. So kids, some of you who are out there are saying, well, I don't get to take communion. Does that mean I don't get to partake of grace? You absolutely do. Whenever you come up here, a pastor will lay his hand on, his, on your forehead and will say something to you. And he will forgive you of your sin. And that is partaking of grace with us. So you get to be a part of it as well. That's a wonderful thing because it means everyone is involved. So this is the partnership that we've been talking about. Together we have faith, which has been given to us in our baptism. And together we partake of communion or grace as one church. What actually binds all of this together is Jesus Christ. He is who makes us who we are, and he is what makes us more than just a social institution. He is what makes it 
holy. So you see, we are a congregation who is living a life together based on the partnership of the gospel, as Paul said. Because I want you to consider this. This is the difference between a social institution and what we are doing here today. While a social institution might be a nice and comforting thing, it is ultimately based on the strength of the people participating in it. And people are fallible. They make mistakes and they mess things up. But our church is based on the almighty and everlasting God. And there is more going on here today than people simply participating in a service. God is among us. God is with us now and is participating in your life every day. Without question, we are more than a Red Cross or a Salvation Army, and we are more than an outlet for self-help or guidance. We are the church, and our partnership is rooted in something greater than ourselves. It is rooted in God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we began this discussion by saying that many people misunderstand what the partnership of the church actually is. We said that they think church is a social institution, an agreement people make together to help and build one another up. But we have learned through Paul's writing that it is actually something far more. Our partnership is so much greater our partnership is based on Jesus Christ and is made tangible through the gifts that he gives us in baptism and the Lord's Supper. This is why our church is wonderful, because together we understand this and we realize that our partnership, our reason for being here, is not only a social thing, it is a holy thing. And it is based on the word of God and shown to us through Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross. Now may the peace that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in true faith in Jesus Christ. Amen.